And welcome back to our time. This is sort of a special episode because we're introducing some music men to you. And welcome again, Greg Hart. Thank you, Malcolm. You don't abbreviate your name. No, you can't. G? G H? No, I don't actually. It's, oh. it's it's actually abbreviated. It is Gregory. Oh, it's Gregory. Okay. That's only when well, I'm in trouble. Well, it's Trevor before to Trev, so okay. Greg to oh, yeah, right. yeah. Yeah, usually when I'm in trouble, it's Gregory, though. So, oh, OK. Yeah. Your mum still calls you Gregory? Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's great to have you back. Thank because you. Good to be back. In, in 2014, you're playing, once again, several different characters as a performer. Mm. And Greg, or Gregory, is not only just a wonderful musician, but um, it's not fair to call you an impersonator, is it? Because you're really <laughs> creating, I suppose, the idiosyncrasies of certain performers. Yeah, I, I guess what I, I... I mean, they're all heroes of mine, so I, I, so I really... So name them so we know who you're talking about. OK, well, um, the ones I'm working on at the moment, or the shows that I'm actually doing, are Neil Diamond, Roy Orbison, Tom Jones. Um, I do a JOK, Johnny O'Keefe one. Mm -hmm. And I do a composite show that actually includes Elvis Presley, Barry Gibb and... Uh, a few others that I've actually worked on over the years. Um, but the aim is, to, is, is more of, as I say, a tribute to rather than an impersonation of. Impersonation of, of yes. Uh, Excepting you do capture the things that, the very essence of the performers, strangely enough, and I know you're not impersonating them, but you just sort of sit there and I'm a fan, I'm a fan. I just need to tell you that. But you just sit there uh, as an audience, you sit there and you can see and hear the person, even though we're seeing you. Yeah. Well, I, I do. I, I do disguise my voice, so it, it actually, I suppose, is closer to them than it is to me. And uh, but is it because you're also an actor? I think that's a big part of it. Which yeah. came first, the music or the acting? Uh, I think I've always been an actor, but uh, a serious musician from 15, um, and but still a child in terms of, you know, like I'm very naive as a musician, even though I teach music. I, I still like that naive approach to it, and that is don't know everything about it. You know, keep exploring. Keep Let it surprise you. Yeah. Let the music itself surprise you. Yeah, yeah it's a yeah. good point. Yeah. Is it good to work with your wife? Um, it is. I, I find her incredibly inspirational, actually. She's, she's classically trained, and, and I'm self-taught. So um, she has a lot more musical knowledge than I do. But having said that, I'm, I'm probably a lot broader based than she is. So does that mean does your bum look big in this? Yeah, my bum is huge. Is. Um, but no more than that, I've actually uh, I've probably explored a lot more styles and mm. because um, I've, as I say, self-taught, I'm, I'm still very naive in the sense that I can take on everything in my head. Yep. Why not be an opera singer and, uh, and a country sound, uh, whatever it is, you know, like take it all on. You say. But you've, you've had a really long history of doing uh, book shows or uh, musicals yeah. as well. Yep. So you've actually had sort of a band career, so to speak, and a musical career as an actor, singer, mm. dancer, everything, really. You've had to do everything. Yeah, I guess so. I think I, I really like... I mean, I've always been, uh, I guess, a child of the 50s. You, you know, you sort of grew up with a lot of the musical, mm. uh, musicals on, on TV and so forth. And uh, it was always a big part of, I guess, my musical background. I probably just need to explain what you just said though. The musicals on TV yeah. in the 50s and 60s were really the musicals of predominantly the 40s too, weren't they? Yes. So yeah. we got to sort of know the shows that are now making comebacks all mm. over the world in mm. fact. Yeah. So it was just great to have that because we saw them all in black and white even though they were metro colour or whatever they were. Yes, exactly right. And I, and I think uh, when you look at some of those early ones, you know, the, the Singing in the Rain and, and, and you know, some of the... Donna O'Connor always um, stood out to me in the sense that... Uh, he was the same height as you. Yeah, probably the same height. Yeah, <laughs> a giant of a man. Um, but, How tall are you, Greg? Um, <laughs> five foot seven and a half inches. Now, I don't know what that is. That half it? counts. It does. Yes. Girls would know that. That yes. extra half inch makes a big difference because you stand alongside them and um, you either look like a shrimp or... Whatever. Just wear high heels. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Stilettos. Yeah. No, good things come in small packages. Well, there's an advert and at the moment that's saying, saying that. I yes. can't remember which one it was. But they were talking about um, uh, Attila the Hun or whoever it was, somebody, and they're all pit yeah, Alexander the Great was... was yeah. Was, um, so, yeah, I'm saying... that vertically I can challenged. take over the world. Yeah, it's quite. Yeah. 
<laughs> does size really matter? Only how well you sing at, in this particular instance. See, I think a, a lot of people watching us are probably very familiar with the performers on the eastern seaboard of Australia, but a lot of people don't realise that in both Perth and here in South Australia, we have people that predominantly work within our own field here, and you're certainly one of them. Mm. You have a huge following here, which is wonderful. When you put Greg's name up on the show, um, people just turn up. And, and they've followed your career, which is a really lovely thing, actually. Yeah, I'm very amazed by that, actually. And they'll tell you the different shows they've seen that you've done and the mm. different artists that you've done. Mm. And I know they're not tribute shows, but the different artists that you've performed sort of both as and with or paying tribute to or yeah, whatever I, I, expression is I guess is the right. diversity thing helps there, because when you it do does. musical theatre or you do band work or you do these tribute shows or whatever it is, you're reaching a lot of different audiences yes but they'll all they'll all start to become you know sort of like followers of, of well it you. wasn't Johnny O'Keefe the same height as you he was exactly the same there you go yeah and John was such a big star in Australia and um, it, the sad thing is we're sort of losing the names of those people in the new generation coming up because we don't uh, pay enough tribute I think to Australia's own particularly somebody like John who without him we wouldn't have a musical in industry in this country, certainly not to the extent that it is now. Well, he was the pioneer. He, was he the, worked you know, so was, hard to make it happen. Yeah, there was a country scene and so forth, but there wasn't a pop scene and a rock mm. and roll scene as such. So he, he really, through adversity, he, he broke through and, and changed the attitude, I guess, of Australians because at that point in time, we always thought Australian acts were inferior. And uh, he was the guy that really broke that mould mm. and, and uh, started to make us really think about it. homegrown we could actually have people with equal talents and skills and uh, start to really make us, I think, appreciate what we do have. And you're doing a, a show about, or about him this year, aren't you? Um. Yes, yeah. It, uh, we're, we're doing a number of, uh, of, um, of the, the, my shows through the year, um, but one is obviously the JOK one, which, which I call the wild one, surprisingly mm -hmm. enough. But Because um, you are. Uh, uh, probably more the crazy one, I think, okay. more than the wild one. But uh, yeah, I think uh, I, I really love doing that, the, the O'Keefe show because fantastic music for a start, but high energy. Mm. Uh, I do a lot of costume changes and things, crazy things in it. But um, yeah, it's a fantastic show. I've yeah. seen it and I loved it. Good. Uh, and it is touring in South Australia uh, in 2014. So it's just a matter of watching out for both the show and you. Mm because it's just terrific. Just thanks so much Thank for you. coming and talking to us Absolute about pleasure. what you're doing and, and good luck in the future. And some people are actually lucky enough to have you teaching them as well. One thing we didn't cover, do you enjoy that? I love teaching. It's something, I, I've had people say to me many times, you know, um, why do you still teach when you can make a, you know, you could make a living out of just the performing side of it. The, the teaching side to me is so important. I mean, for a teacher you have, um, I guess, you know, uh, this, this nurturing side, you know, you have mm. this, this, this love of music. But I, I constantly get back from students, you know, how passionate I am about it. But I guess I want to instil that in, in them as well. Keeps and you grounded, doesn't it? It does. Now, you're going to come back in a tick and yep. sing for us. Oh, and well. the song is? Play Me. It's a Neil Diamond song. Fantastic. Mm. Stay with us here on Airtime because we've got a really nice little surprise for you coming up.